This national competition featured original works done with a threaded needle. The entries were done in two and three dimensions. entry was sewn to a water-soluble matrix that was later dissolved, leaving only thread. Human teeth and hair on this entry made it a bit disturbing. subtle entry featured many shades of white. We stopped at this beautiful wooded garden to see the new sculpture, Group of Bears. This private park is owned by a family who owns a garden center. It is beautifully planted and meticulously maintained. When I picked up Marilyn, I enjoyed seeing the riot of yellow flowers in her garden. Ruan Ewing remodeled an old barn into a fabulous studio. Janet couldn't go today, so Joanne Fishbach joined us. Ruan has planted lots of wildflowers, especially poppies. Inside, the studio was a visual feast. Ruan does jewelry and beadwork. She explained some of her pieces to us. Ruan has an extensive collection of others' artwork. And she showed us the area where she does her large metal sculptures. We drove down to the War Eagle River and got out to walk about. Knew we were looking for property, mm -hmm. so he called us and just said, do you want this property? And we were like, yeah. There used to be just this huge gravel Bird. bar right here. So oh, really? you could just oh, walk on the gravel bar, but oh. this, this year the floods have just been horrendous. Ruan's unique home is nestled into a bluff above the War Eagle River. There's a hot tub outside, a small but very functional kitchen, a cozy sitting room with hand-painted cabinets, and a deck to die for out over the War Eagle River.
we crossed the rickety bridge and arrived at the picturesque War Eagle Mill, which is still in operation. We ate at the Bean Palace restaurant on the second floor of the mill. Since we were so close, we went to War Eagle Caverns just to check it out. We didn't go into the cavern or do the maze, but we saw kids panning for gold and went into the gift shop. We also came away with a few clever garden ideas. We met at Highlands Crossing, and then our first stop was Pinnacle Mall for a big sale at Dillard's. Janet was absent, so Louise Turner filled in. This regional group has members from Northwest Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. We all had the Bento Vox lunch and enjoyed the spectacular views of the city. Part of the fun of going to the Philbrook is driving through the beautiful neighborhood that surrounds it. The Italian Renaissance Villa, originally known as Villa Philbrook, was built by Waite and Genevieve Phillips. Phillips was one of the early Oklahoma oil pioneers. The gardens and the architecture are as big a part of the experience as the art inside the villa. Guests are welcome to take a walking tour of the gardens and enjoy all the seasonal plantings. Cause my hair is curly, oh so curly cause my teeth are pearly, oh so pearly just because I always wear a smile, oh baby, and try to dress up in the, dress up in the latest style, I mean the latest style, cause I'm glad I'm living, take trouble smiling, never whine, oh whine, cause my color shady, and it's slightly different, maybe that's why they call me shine. After our walk about the garden, we attended a gallery talk on the block prints of Gustav Bauman. We found them much more colorful than we expected. They even had a few of the original blocks he used. We posed for this photo outside La Villa restaurant after a yummy lunch. We explored the many galleries and marveled at the vast collection of various artworks. Under this astounding light in the library, we found a collection of photos and some information on the history of the Phillips. The architecture of the home never ceased to amaze us. From its Baroque columns, to its opulent furnishings, 
and wall murals. And also, there were many beautiful objects that the Phillips had owned. Huge fountains in the home were no longer working because of damage to the artwork the humidity would cause. We enjoyed seeing the disco floor. This piece was a hoot. And this suitcase was actually ceramic. There were quite a few pieces of Native American art. This Navajo painting was my favorite. I felt it had oriental influences. Native American art with a more modern influence. Marilyn with her favorite piece of art. Of course we had to check out the gift shop. They had some exquisite jewelry. But the prices were exquisite too. After a short rest at our hotel, we set out for the Oklahoma Stage Show. The amphitheater was sort of out in the middle of nowhere, but after some minor difficulty in finding it, we posed for pictures and watched a demo of how the Pony Express used to work. The theater was neat, with real trees and buildings on the stage. The pre-show was fun. There was an Indian dancer. Saloon girls doing the can-can. They brought us to our feet with a rousing rendition of Lee Greenwood's I'm Proud to be an American. We especially enjoyed the horses that were a part of the production. The next morning we set out for Tulsa City Park. We got sidetracked by a beautiful house across the street and had to check out every little blossom. We enjoyed the sights and smells of the Anne Hathaway Herb Garden. At the far side of the park was the Linnaeus Teaching Garden, named after the father of botany. This helpful volunteer 
told us about the garden. It's only a few years old and not very large. She took our picture with Linnaeus. We went on into the garden and were really impressed with the beautiful plantings, the water features, and just the whole place in general. It was so well maintained and to have so many plants blooming in August was amazing. Another volunteer gave us a complete tour of the entire place. Oh, you may be daydreaming for a thousand years. What a day for a daydream. Custom made for a daydreaming boy. Now I'm lost in a daydream. Dreaming about my bundle of joy. It was a small but prolific vegetable garden. They had used a lot of vertical plantings to use every inch of the small space. It was a greenhouse with tropicals. Every little nook and cranny was planted with something, like this Mexican feather grass. Our guide told us that the water features turned out to be larger than originally planned. But everybody loved them, so no problem. Just outside the garden was the test area, where they had planted large sections of various plants. Further along was the rose garden, but it wasn't at its peak. We stopped in the gift shop, of course, and then went to the Tulsa Garden Center, saw the room where the Garden Club meets, and toured the house. There were black and white photos in each room showing what the decorations were like when the place was a private home. It was only a short drive to the Gilcrease Museum. We marveled at the small size of Thomas Gilcrease's home, which was next door. The museum was built to house Gilcrease's vast collections. We had a good lunch in the Osage restaurant in the museum. At the end of this long sloping room was a really spectacular totem pole. Art collection includes over 10,000 paintings, drawings, and prints and sculptures by 400 artists from colonial times to present. At the Gilcrease, the anthropology collections and the work of the Department of Anthropology focus on the cultural history of North, Central, and South America from initial human settlement up to the present day. Collections comprise more than 250,000 specimens. The archive collection contains over 100,000 books, manuscripts, documents, and maps ranging from 1494 to present day. joined a docent led tour and were told that it would have been impossible for any one man to uh, make all these acquisitions. What Mr. Phillips did was he bought the extensive collections of other people. The docent said that this painting was based on a real incident that had been dramatized considerably.
priest has gardens, but we decided to save that till next time. Hit the highway and headed back to Arkansas.